In this video, you'll learn why PHP frameworks such as Laravel and Symfony are more secure because they contain a public folder. In the previous video, we learnt what a front controller is, and we created a very simple one that loads a page based on a value in the query string. So we can pass different values in to the page variable, and this loads different pages. However, as these scripts are still in the project folder, we can still access them directly. This completely bypasses the front controller, so any security checks or setup that we do in there can be circumvented. There's another problem with having all the project code in a folder that's accessible from a browser. We'll look at configuration settings in more detail in a later video, but for now, let's imagine that we have a file called settings. This contains configuration details such as database passwords and so on. Note this isn't PHP code and is just a text file. As the entire project folder is accessible from a browser, this file can be accessed and we can see its contents. So for now, all we really need access to in the browser is the front controller. All these other files shouldn't be in a folder that's web accessible. The solution that most frameworks employ is to have a folder called public. So let's create such a folder. Then let's move the front controller index.php into that folder. Before we try this, we have to make a small change to the front controller script. Previously, we were including other files relative to the location of index.php. As they were in the same folder, we could get the path to that folder with the dir constant. Now however, as we've moved index.php into the public folder, they're one level above this. So we can use the dir name function to get the path to the parent folder of the public folder. So now to access the front controller, we could just add public to the path in the URL like this, and this works. However, we can still access the original files directly, so this hasn't solved anything. To fix this, we need to change the web server configuration. A web server is configured with a root folder. This is sometimes referred to as the document root or web root. This is the directory where the web server looks for files to serve to the client, for example a web browser. Any files inside this folder are potentially accessible to the client. Files outside this folder cannot be accessed directly from the browser, but they can still be used internally by code that is inside this folder. As I'm using the PHP built-in web server, let's see how we configure that so that the public folder is the root. First, I'll stop the web server with Control c Note I'm still in the root folder of the application. To specify a specific folder to be used as the web root, we add the T flag, followed by the path to the desired folder, in this case, public. Now we can remove public from the URL and the requests work again. These requests are going via the front controller. Now, however, if I try to access one of the original files directly, we get an error. The same is true for the settings file. It doesn't matter at this point what this error is, as we'll look at error handling in more detail later on. The important thing is that the individual pages and files, such as the settings file, are no longer directly accessible in a web browser, so the framework code is more secure. If you're using another web server, such as Apache, then to achieve the same result, you need to change the document root value in the server configuration so that it includes the public folder. In addition to the front controller, the public folder is also where static files such as CSS, JavaScript and publicly available images go. For example, let's add a file called example.css to that folder and insert some example CSS code. Now in the browser, we can access that file like this. So this would be the file path you would use to reference a static file like this stylesheet. There's another potential problem with having PHP code in a publicly accessible folder. 
To demonstrate this, I've configured a local install of the Apache web server with the document root set to the public folder of the project. So we can access the same URLs as the PHP development web server, with the only difference being the Apache server is running on port 80 instead of port 8000, so we don't need to specify the port. The reason I'm doing this is to show what happens if there's a configuration problem on the server, and PHP is disabled. I can't do this with the PHP development server, I need to use a different server. At the moment, PHP is configured properly, and the code is executed and returns the expected response. However, let's see what happens if I go into the Apache configuration and disable PHP. Now if I request a PHP page again, the browser downloads the PHP script without executing it. So now we have the raw PHP code. This isn't too much of a problem with this simple PHP code, but imagine that an attacker got access to all of your PHP source code due to a server misconfiguration. Admittedly, it's unlikely that this would happen, but the potential is there. This is another advantage of having the PHP source code outside of the web accessible root folder. The only PHP file that could be downloaded like this is the front controller. So for this reason, it's in our interest to put the minimum amount of code we can in this file. At the moment, there's very little code in here, but as we add features to the application, we're going to need more and more common code. So let's put that in a file that's outside of the public folder. First, let's create a folder in the root of the project called src, short for source. This is typically where PHP code goes in an application. Then, let's create a new file in that folder called bootstrap.php. Note the name of this file has nothing to do with the CSS framework of the same name. This is just a typical name used for a file like this. In here, let's add the PHP opening tag and enable strict type checking. Then let's go back to the index file in the public folder, select all the PHP code, cut it and paste it in the bootstrap script. Then back in the index, let's require the bootstrap file in the source folder, using the dir name function with the dir constant to get the path to the parent folder of the public folder. In the browser, let's request a page again, still with PHP disabled. This downloads the file, but if we view the contents, all it is is the contents of the front controller file, which is just including the bootstrap file. If I look at the site served from the PHP development web server, then this still works as before. So now any common code we need to add to the application can be added to the bootstrap script instead of the front controller. Static files such as CSS and JavaScript can go in the public folder. We don't need to put any further code in index.php. Just to clean this up, we no longer need this settings file that I created earlier as an example, so I'll delete it. We'll look at how to deal with configuration settings in a later video. So the public folder is used in a framework because it cleanly separates web accessible files from private code, which improves security and code organization. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.